Margaret Sanger was born on September 14, 1879, the sixth of 11 children to Michael and Anne Higgins of Corning, New York. Margaret attended nursing school at White Plains Hospital after attending boarding school at Clay Rock College. In 1902, Margaret marries architect William Sanger, and the two settle in a suburb of New York. There, Margaret bears three children. Margaret joins the New York Socialist Party and the New York Industrial Workers of the World. Margaret returns to nursing in the Lower East Side slums of Manhattan. There, she's treating women at back alley coat hanger abortions or self-induced abortions. Margaret comes to believe in the importance of women's lives and women's health is through the availability of birth control. In 1912, Margaret devotes herself to distributing information on birth control. The Comstock Act of 1873 forbids her from sending obscene contraceptive information or device information through the mail. Margaret begins writing a column in the Socialist Party, The Call, published as What Every Girl Should Know in 1960, which focuses on sex education, and then What Every Mother Should Know in 1917. On March 1914, Margaret writes the first issue of The Women's Rebel. In 1913, Margaret flees to Europe under the alias Bertha Watson due to being prosecuted under the Comstock Law. After fleeing when she's in international waters, she orders 100,000 copies of Family Limitations to be released. Margaret travels throughout Europe, visiting birth control clinics. When she returns to the United States to face her sentence, she starts promoting the use of douches for birth control purposes. A Dutch birth control clinic convinces Sanger that the new, more flexible diaphragm that is carefully fitted by a medically trained staff was the most effective contraceptive device available. Margaret and her sister Ethel opened the first birth control clinic in Brooklyn. Just nine days after opening its doors, it is raided. Margaret and the staff are arrested. Margaret is sentenced and spends 30 days in prison. The publicity that comes about brings many wealthy supporters to help build the birth control reform. Sanger appeals her conviction, but the decision is upheld. But the New York Appellate Court exempts physicians from the Comstock Act if they prescribe for medical reasons. Sanger staffs the Birth Control Clinic Research Bureau with female physicians and social workers. In 1917, she establishes a monthly newsletter, the Birth Control Review. In 1921, she opens the American Birth Control League, focusing her efforts on gaining support from medical physicians and social workers and the liberal wing of the eugenics movement. Birth control for the means of decreasing genetically transmitted medical and physical defects. In 1930, Margaret starts the Negro Project, which opens a family planning clinic in Harlem, where those patients have been denied access for city health care and social services. The clinic is staffed by black physicians and black social workers and endorsed by W.E.B. Du Bois. Du Bois is quoted stating, This unique experiment in race building and humanitarian services to a race subjected to discrimination, hardship, and segregation. Singer is also quoted about the Negro Project stating, The mass of ignorant Negroes still breed carelessly and disastrously, so that the increase among Negroes is even more than the increase among whites, is from that proportion of the population least intelligent, fit, and at least able to rear children properly. In Margaret Sanger's autobiography, 
She recounts when she spoke to the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan at Silver Lake, New Jersey. Shortly afterwards, she received 12 additional invitations to speak with similar groups. In 1939, the Birth Control Federation of America is formed. It combines the American Birth Control League and the Birth Control Research Bureau. In 1942, Sanger retires to Tucson, Arizona. With the ending of World War II, Sanger returns from retirement and focuses her overwhelming attention to the overwhelming consequences of the population growth in third world countries. Sanger partners together with leaders in Europe and Asia to found the International Planned Parenthood Federation. In 1950, Sanger helps to bring a more simple, cost-effective, and more effective birth control, the birth control pill. Finally, in 1965, the U.S. Supreme Court case, Griswold v. Connecticut, makes birth control legal for married couples. In September 6, 1966, Sanger passes away in a nursing home in Tucson, Arizona.